So in this video, we will look at comparing variable costing versus absorption costing, and this comprises Learning Objective 3.7. So the first thing I want to point out here, Exhibit 319 is out of your text, and again this looks at the conceptual differences between absorption and variable costing. So the first thing we want to look at is product costs. Now remember, product costs are those costs that comprise the product. They are also known as inventoriable costs because those costs can be held in inventory. Now, when it comes to absorption costing, product costs include direct materials, direct labor, and variable overhead. So all of these are variable costs. And there's actually an error in this diagram because this should also include fixed manufacturing overhead as well. When it comes to variable costing, the only costs that are included are the variable costs. So only the direct materials, direct labor, and the variable overhead. So those are the only inventoriable costs. When it comes to period costs, so period costs are those that are expensed in the period in which they're incurred. Under absorption costing, we will include any variable non-manufacturing costs and any fixed non-manufacturing costs. And then when it comes to variable costing, the same variable and fixed non-manufacturing costs are expensed in the period in which they're incurred as with absorption costing, but notice that fixed manufacturing overhead is also expensed in the period. So what happens is under variable costing, we don't treat the fixed manufacturing overhead as a product or inventoriable cost. In terms of the focus, absorption costing is used primarily for external reporting, and we use variable costing for internal reporting. The income statement format that's used for absorption costing is the, here they say conventional, but this is the gross profit income statement format. And of course, for variable costing, we use the contribution margin format. So if we look at an example uh, of variable and absorption costing side by side. So again, these taken out of your text, exhibits 20 uh, and 21. We can see that under both variable and absorption costing, the sales are the same, right? Sales, 8,000 units sold at $30, 240,000, no problem. And then we do a calculation for uh, determining the cost of goods sold as we did in uh, a previous in-class problem that I demonstrated in another video. Uh, remember to determine the cost of goods sold, we start with beginning inventory. In this case, it's zero in our example because we want to illustrate what happens when production exceeds sales and then where sales exceeds production. During the period, the company manufactured 10,000 units at $16 per unit and that includes fixed and variable cost. We know that the variable cost is 11 and the fixed cost is $5 for a total of 16. So that's $160,000 in cost of goods manufactured. When we add that to the beginning inventory, that gives us cost of goods available for sale. And then we deduct the ending inventory. So in this example, the company had 2,000 left at 16, right? That's full absorption cost. Absorption means that the fixed costs are absorbed into inventory, okay? So that's $32,000. And that gives us cost of goods sold of $128,000. Sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. And of course, we would deduct any operating expenses to come up with our operating income. When it comes to variable costing, here, we don't have a section called cost of goods sold. We have a section called variable expenses. And we have two sets of variable expenses. One is for the variable cost of goods sold, and then one for any other variable costs. So following the same approach, we start with zero beginning units in inventory. The company manufactured 11,000, so we add the variable cost of goods sold, but notice only the $11, that's the variable portion. So that's 110,000, giving 110,000 available for sale. And then we subtract the 2,000 units in ending inventory at their variable cost of $11, so that's 22,000, leaving variable cost of goods sold to be 88,000. In addition here, we take our sales commission of 8,000 units at 250, which was included as an operating expense here. So this is the variable commission of 20,000. And so that gives us total variable costs of 108,000 and sales minus variable costs is contribution margin of 132,000. We then deduct the fixed expenses. So we have the fixed manufacturing overhead here. That's the full 50,000 that was incurred, but because under variable costing, we don't include it as part of the product cost, all 50,000 is expensed. And then the fixed marketing and admin expenses, which is also this one here, the fixed marketing. So total fixed costs are 75,000 and that gives us operating income of 57,000. So what we see here is we have a difference, right? If we look at this, 67 and this 57, that's a $10,000 difference. 
And that's made up of the 2,000 units in inventory times the $5 fixed cost per unit. So that's the amount that's been absorbed into inventory. What this diagram here, Exhibit 22, shows is that if we look at determining the total manufacturing costs for either absorption or variable costing, the total manufacturing costs are actually the same. They consist of the variable cost of $11 times the number produced, that's 110,000, and 50,000 in total manufacturing costs, giving us 160,000 in total manufacturing costs. The variable is the same, right? Under variable costing, the total manufacturing costs are still 100, 110,000 variable plus 50 fixed, giving a total of 160,000. But the difference is how much of that is considered to be a product cost and is carried in inventory. So under absorption costing, in terms of what comprises the asset value of the inventory, we have the variable cost plus the fixed cost. And that's that 2,000 units times $5. So giving us 32,000 in ending inventory on the balance sheet as an asset under absorption costing, and that's equivalent to 2,000 times $16. And we saw that in the income statement right here. This is how much is in inventory. And then of course, the amount that's expensed are, the, are based on the number of units sold. So 8,000 units sold at the variable cost of 11, and then 8,000 units sold at the unit fixed cost of five gets put in there. So the income statement shows 128,000 in cost of goods manufactured. Variable costing on the other hand, shows the inventory asset only a variable cost of $22,000. And the amount expensed is the same 88,000 as under absorption costing for variable costs, but then the entire 50,000 of fixed costs is also expensed. And so 138,000 in total expense on the income statement. And again, you see that difference between these two is $10,000. And it's also the difference between the ending inventories, 32,000 and 22,000 is the $10,000 difference. So this was a situation where we had operating income with increasing inventory. We started with zero, we produced 10,000 and only sold 8,000, so the inventory went up. But what happens when the inventory goes the other way, when, we, when inventory goes down? So the only way for that to happen is for uh, sales to exceed production. So if we look at absorption costing, the same company this time in the next month, April, uh, sold 12,000 units at $30. And in the cost of goods calculation now, we start with the beginning finished goods inventory from the previous period of $32,000. The cost of goods manufactured, see in both months, they still produce 10,000 units. So that part doesn't change. And we're using the sales to help us determine whether the inventory goes up or down. So the same cost of goods manufactured, $16 times 10,000 units is still 160, giving 192,000 in cost of goods available. But this time, the company sold 12,000 units. And so that means that there's zero inventory left. So the cost of goods sold then is 192,000, giving gross profit of 168,000. And then we subtract the, these are the variable commissions again, and this is the fixed marketing. So all other costs are the same. What we're trying to do is isolate the differences as they relate to changes in inventory. So the operating income here is 113,000. Looking at variable costing, sales are the same, and we deduct all variable costs, so beginning inventory of 22,000 plus the same cost of goods manufactured, 110,000, that gives you available for sale, and then we subtract the ending inventory of zero, of which there is none because they're all gone, and so the variable costing cost of goods sold is 132,000, and then we have 30,000 in sales commissions, giving us contribution margin of 198,000, and then the same fixed costs, the 50,000 in fixed overhead for manufacturing and fixed admin expense of 25, giving operating income of 123,000. And look here, the difference between these two is $10,000. And that is the result of the $10,000 that was sitting in inventory on the balance sheet now gets pushed to the income statement. So in terms of identifying some rules of thumb or things to remember here, these three panels are kind of helpful. So in situations where inventory remains constant, so that means sales equals production, then your inventory levels are constant and absorption income will equal variable costing income. There'll be no difference. 
However, in situations where the inventory increases, and so this means where the uh, production is greater than sales, then your inventory level increases and therefore absorption costing will be higher or conversely variable costing income will be lower. And then in the third situation where your inventory levels decrease, so this happens where sales exceeds production, then you are pulling. See, in the case where inventory increases, you're absorbing or pulling fixed costs off the income statement into the balance sheet. When your sales exceed production, the piper is now paid. And as the units that were held in inventory with that additional fixed cost are now sold, those costs have to then move from the balance sheet back to the income statement. So the inventory levels decrease, and then now the variable costing income is higher. So I hope that helped in explaining the differences between variable and absorption costing. Uh, in another video, we'll actually go through this in class problem 3.2 uh, over two periods and look at how we can see those changes between the two incomes and reconcile them.